Hey Java developers, I'm overlooking the downtown Kansas City airport to talk about one of my favorite Java tools, JDK Flight Recorder, or as it's more properly known, JFR. I actually talk about JFR a lot. And if you're new to JFR and want to learn more about it, definitely check out my Stackwalker video on it, which you can see here. I'm here to talk about what new changes are coming to JFR in JDK 21, including a big one making it easier to view your JFR recordings. With that, let's take off. The big new change coming to JFR in JDK 21 is JFR View. Currently, the JFR tool is pretty good if for reviewing your recordings if you have a good idea of what you're looking for. If you're looking for GC pauses, or maybe you implemented a custom JFR event, JFR tool can be a good way to filtering down to that specific event to see how many occurrences of them happened. Where JFR tool isn't so good is giving a more holistic or analytical view of a JFR recording. For that, you would often need a tool like JDK Mission Control or JMC to, to do that for holistic recording. That tool is great, but it does add a layer of friction where you may often have to download a recording and then open it up in the JDK Mission Control. JFU is a trying to fill in that gap. To use JFR view, you would do JFR view, the view that you want to use, and the recording that you want to analyze. The JFR team has already added 16 recordings and a number that I'm sure is going to increase over time. There's also meta recordings like all events or all views. There are also options for changing the format of the table, the table width, individual cell width, if data is truncated, and also a verbose view. The JFR view tool can also be used on a running JVM. For that, you would use J command or JCMD. You would do JCMD, the PID of the JVM process you want to analyze, JVR.view, and then the view you want to analyze. By default, only the last 10 minutes of data will be returned, or the first 32 megabytes, whichever comes first. But this can be changed with either the max age or max size settings, respectively. And the other settings of changing the, the view formatting is also available. So JFR view is the biggest change coming to JFR in JDK 21, but there are a few other changes worth mentioning, and this episode of Inside Java Newscast would be way too sorry if I ended it here. I guess verbose isn't only a setting on JFR view. <laughs> so there are a few new events that are being added to JFR in JDK 21. There is an event for when agents have been loaded into the JVM, and also an event for checking the resident set size. Also, with virtual threads now being a standard feature in JDK 21, the experimental annotation on events related to virtual threads is being removed. A new JFR setting has been added to preserve the disk repository on JVM exit. Currently, the behavior is to delete all this data on JVM exit, but this can be disabled with the flight recorder options preserve repository, which is a boolean and can be set to true to disable this behavior. The default setting is false. Finally, JFR will provide better error messaging for our misconfigured JFR at startup. Currently, the error messaging JFR provides can be rather opaque, which can make it difficult to debug why an application is failing at startup, particularly as Java commands in production settings can be rather complex. Now, JFR will provide better error messaging, assuming, of course, a misconfigured JFR is the reason for the failure. I'd like to request our flight attendants be seated at this time. We're landing in about one minute. Thank you. All right, well, that's it for this episode of the Inside Java Newscast. Anna will be hosting the next episode of the Inside Java Newscast, where she will be covering the KEM API, part of an upcoming security JEP. If you like this video, share with a friend. If you didn't like this video, share with an enemy. If you have a question, leave a comment. But until then, happy coding!